Hello there, esteemed gentlemen. <laughs> with what we suffered at the beginning of this generation in terms of marketing with the promise of reality splitting visuals <laughs> from a full fat quote unquote gold top RDNA2 posting RT, VRS, mesh shaders and geometry engines, sampler feedback streaming, and let's not forget crazy IO, including the ethereal but mainly just words velocity architecture only for swathes of the development community to center around a path of least resistance, leaning on a combination of FSR, TSR, and DSR to get the best bang for the buck, delivering their visual feasts. Did Microsoft and Sony focus on the wrong features? What's your view on the features they should focus on going into the next generation to deliver on the promise of, quote, unquote, the biggest technical leap ever in a generation? Um, yeah, my sort of input on this is basically it's it's going to be machine learning features we've already seen sony embrace it on ps5 pro we've already seen um that dlss has basically been uh, a transformative feature in the pc space um we heard some revised figures on um adapt um, on, on adoption of dlss on certain right. titles at gamescom Certain titles are seeing up to 98% utilization of DLSS. The point is at this point that it's just, you know, becoming hugely important. It's a standard part of uh, of the PC experience. It's got to move to console. And you can rest assured that NVIDIA are not going to be sitting still there. Uh, Alex, what do you reckon? Yes. Um, I think <laughs> yes. machine learning. Yes. Uh, I feel like machine learning because... There is a whole kind of stratosphere of techniques that can be modified with machine learning to give better results. We've only seen it really branching into the denoising uh, category of rendering recently, which is a huge part of ray tracing, though. It is the thing that makes our image coalesce. And if that research keeps going forward, as well as the other research that has been demonstrated uh, most recently also by NVIDIA, um, but you know, there's other researchers in the field about using it to enhance material quality and texture quality, and presumably also at some point geometric quality while reducing and keeping runtime memory lower and or shading costs lower by not having multiple passes of materials. You know, these are all things that we actually want to see in games, and they're not the generative aspect of AI or machine learning. They're they're like they're like the best inferencing aspect of AI, uh, of machine learning, and I feel like that is so that is a really big field that is only coming online now to a greater degree, and we're starting to see integrations in games, but it's going to just keep kind of growing, and I feel like that. Is such a big part of next gen. I'd also like to see the the features of Unreal Engine Five, which is the engine at the moment. Like I would love to see hardware uh, intersecting with software there. Not to see just like acceleration, hardware acceleration of UE Five features, but just to make sure that they mesh better. Right now, uh, hardware ray tracing is a bit incongruous with Nanite, and I would like to see them much more just better supported with one another. So th those are all things I would like to see in uh, in the next gen. And I do think there was a little bit of an oversell of the current generation at its beginning. I think we said it even back then that people expecting 4K60 were out of their minds. Like real 4K60 is like, that's like the, you know, like the Xbox One tier PS4 tier visuals, maybe at best, mm. at, with a real 4K 60, we knew already what the GPU level was yeah. in terms of raw bandwidth and things like that. That that is the core limiting factor to high resolution performance usually. Uh, so yeah, that was dumb. Uh, but I still think there's some exploitation there in regards to uh, things like mesh shaders, which we haven't seen so much so yet. So. Yeah, some of it, I didn't like the selling of it, but others I think developers haven't gotten their hands on yet, slash they're expensive to get their hands on. It takes a while to develop an engine that actually does, uh, like, I think there's some quotes that, like, once you hook up to direct storage on Xbox or the exclusive API for um, uh, the SSD on uh, Sony side that 
The thing that is not going to be limiting your performance necessarily is I.O. anymore. It really isn't, but your CPU game code is just not at all ready for that. So it, you're just bottlenecking some other part of the system at that point. So developers have to change all that before we start seeing bigger differences in those regards, at least in terms of loading times, I think. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, what do you reckon, Oliver? Yeah, I mean, I, I don't know if the decisions were bad ones to incorporate some of those features that this person has suggested, many of which have not been used extensively. Because it depends on what the dying area is, what the development cost is of those different features. And there are some big payoffs as well, like the decompression hardware and obviously just that raw SSD bandwidth in both systems that's been used very extensively. Sometimes you look at a PC that might not have some of that hardware and the results are not so flattering, like with TLU part one. Um, I mean, I guess some things are not really used, like sampler feedback streaming, but I guess what's the cost? For Microsoft in particular, with some of the RDNA 2 features, I think some of the issues just come down to the fact that Sony was not in lockstep with them. It takes two to tango, and developers develop games around the lowest common denominator quite frequently, and so they don't take advantage. And obviously, Xbox is a smaller platform than PlayStation 5. Maybe that plays a role in it as well. Um, and also, some, I mean, some of those features weren't very good, like hardware VRS. It's just not very good. So right. I think it's a mix of factors, but yeah, I think it's like, it's one thing to say, oh, sampler feedback streaming was a huge mistake. And it's another thing to say, okay, how much did it cost them to make that? Maybe it was cheap. Who knows? Mm, yeah. It seemed like a good idea. What can I say? Yeah. <laughs> it still seems like a good idea, you know, a decent solution to VRAM management because the cost of memory isn't going down. You know, it, it just seemed like a really good idea. It just hasn't seemed to have wide scale adoption. Uh, maybe next gen, who knows? Uh, maybe there'll do, be some variant of that technology. Maybe there'll be a software solution. I mean, it's pretty much what Unreal is doing in terms of virtual texturing, right, Alex? Yeah, similar enough. I guess just the granularity is better with SFS. Yeah. Uh, and that's the key. And I think hardware enabling features that are exposed in an API, th there's always like they can go one way or the other. Sometimes they can see extreme broad adoption. I think ray tracing has shown that, but they can also just be completely forgotten about because there's too many um, kind of, you can either punch yourself in the face while doing them by accident. You can reduce some, like geometry shaders was like the really great example of that where, yeah, we can really manipulate geometry now to do a lot more, but the cost of even just invoking it was just ridiculous on the hardware of the time wouldn't necessarily get better. Uh, so it was just kind of almost never used except for niche cases. So um, some of that could be that. So I, I think my word of warning to myself and also anyone else in the future is to just like take everything with a grain of salt and wait like three or five years to see actually how things turn out um, because it's, some of those things are not so predictable because they advertise them, but you don't know like, okay, yeah, but what's the hook that, you know, like the developers are going to want from it. And it's hard mm. to know that. Yeah. I mean, it's actually interesting that RT is in Ostex 78's a lineup of uh, features that weren't really used when it has actually been used. And Mark Cerny said that he was actually really surprised at the adoption of RT in launch titles on PlayStation. So yeah. There, there has been progress. It's just the whole range of features haven't been used. So mm -hmm. there's also PC to factor in as well. Maybe the proliferation of DirectX Ultimate just hasn't really been there to justify a lot of this stuff.